In this video, we're going to take a look at exponential functions that take the form of y equals a times b to the x. And so the formation of these equations come from the fact that we take the initial value or the y-intercept, or oftentimes what we call what it starts at, and the multiplier, the b value, as in what it goes by. And if we figure out that it's repeated multiplication, then it's going to be exponential with the x up top. So the multiplier is the key. We can find the initial value or the zero value in the table pretty easily. Finding the multiplier is something where we may need to take some work or do some calculations. And oftentimes what we're going to do is we're going to take the next number in the table or the list divided by the previous. If you can remember next divided by previous, you can oftentimes find the multiplier. So, and then you can write the equation. So let's take a look at a couple of examples. The first example is if we are given a table of data for a bouncy ball activity where a ball bounces to a height of 90 centimeters after the second bounce, 60 centimeters after the third, and 40 centimeters after the fourth. What we're trying to do is calculate and write the equation for this to begin with and fill in the remaining values in the table. Well, if we go back to what we just talked about in this um, formula, we need the initial value, what it starts at, and what it goes by. So if we take a look at this, we don't have the initial value, which would be here at the zero. So we need to work our way backwards to find it. We also need to figure out what this is going by. How does 90 change to 60 and then 60 to 40? Well, it's not subtraction or addition based because this change is changing. If the rate of change is changing, it's going to be more than likely exponential for us. So what we're going to do is we need to figure out what we're doing here. So then we need to do is we need to take next divided by previous. So our next number divided by our previous. And so in this particular example, it would be 60 divided by 90. We would take 40 divided by 60 and see if both of those work out to be the same. So if we punch in 60 divided by 90, it's 0.6 repeating. If I take 40 divided by 60, same number. 0.6 repeating is 2 thirds. We need to recognize that. That's a repeating decimal. It never ends. It's represented by this fraction, 2 thirds. So the multiplier is 2 thirds for this particular example. So if I want to work my way back to the zero, I can just simply take 90 divided by 2 thirds and I end up with 135. So this would be 135. Take 135 divided by 2 thirds and I get 202.5. So that tells me that the original height, the original drop value height was 202.5. So my equation would be what it starts at, 202.5 times the multiplier of 2 thirds, because that's what I'm multiplying every time taking these times 2 thirds over and over and over to the x power because it's repeated multiplication. So my final equation would be represented by this exponential function. Now if we take a look at when we're given an equation, when you're given an equation you need to be able to pick it apart. It's called multiple representations. Here is the equation. Can you find the table, the graph, and the meaning or the context? Well if I give you a clue that this is all about an apple tree, then what we could say is, well 5, that has to be some sort of initial value or the y-intercept and the 2 needs to be some sort of multiplier or what it's changing by. Well I guess in this context if we're dealing with an apple tree that means we started with five apples. So started with five apples and what is it doing? Well it's doubling, we'll say it's doubling the number of apples each month. Doubling each month and that would be our context. Started with five apples, it doubles every month, it can be represented by five times two to the x. One of the things I want to get you to think about is if we could, we could jump right to the graph. This five is a huge clue. That five right there immediately tells us it's going to start at five. It's also the y-intercept, so I could go to five and put a five right there. Then I know it's doubling, well, and then I know it's taken to a power. If we remember that exponential curves are something that look like this, then we know what that graph is going to look like already. It's going to start at 5, it's going to curve up by doubling every time, and then it's going to get down here close to the x-axis without ever crossing it because it has an asymptote, and it looks something like this. Now we can confirm that and find the table of values too by plugging in it into y equals. So if I go y equals 5 times 2 to the x power and hit graph, I can see the graph here. Uh, it looks like my window setting isn't showing that 5, so I'll go zoom 6 or zoom standard. And when I do a zoom 6 or a zoom standard, and then go into my y equals, then I will get the uh, graph to look like this because it's going to have the initial value at 5, and it's going to grow from there. So 
as I go to the y equals, hit enter, graph, and now it's running it through that five value and then curving up. And I can go second table, and I can find the table of values. And the table of values obviously would start at five, and it's multiplying by two, getting two times bigger each time. So when given an equation, we can go to the other three representations pretty quickly and pretty easily. And we should be able to predict where this thing is hitting the y-axis based upon our starting value right here of five. And then we know that it's curved because it's this is a number greater than one. If this was a number less than one, if the apple tree started at five and it was multiplying by 0.8 to the x, now what's happening is the apple tree is losing apples and it's decreasing by 20%. To calculate a multiplier, remember, we always base everything off 100%. So 100% minus 20% would leave 80% and then move that back two places, and that gives me a multiplier of 0.8. So this 0.8 multiplier is representing a 20% decrease. So those are the things that you need to consider when we're trying to write an equation of exponential y equals 8 times b to the x. You need to find the initial value and the multiplier. The multiplier is key, and it comes from next divided by previous.